Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Ben. And this is Blake. And you are listening to episode nine of the Nothing New Podcast. We're the podcast that emphasizes how doing the small things will help you turn the corner with your health, your business, your life, and any other area that you may need improvement in. Boom. Boom is back. So we took a, a hiatus for a while, but uh, that was a little creative. We're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Creepy, we're back. Yes. Um, children of the corn style. But welcome back. We're glad to be back, and today we want to talk about a big word. We hope that you enjoy it. It's one of these things that uh, I think a lot of us get caught up in, and um, you'll follow along and understand a little bit more about what we're talking about, but that big word is assertiveness. So, Blake, what, what do you think when it comes down to like the general accepted idea of what assertiveness is? I think, you know, commonly, I think we think of just being assertive as just getting your way. It's it's all about it's all about getting your way. You take force and you get what you want when you want. Um, but I like to think that you know here at Nothing New we might think a little differently. Yeah, I, I think when I kind of hear what you just said, it reminds me of a bulldozer mentality and thinking that like oh, if you're assertive, if you're uh, I don't even know if assertiveness is attached. Well, it is attached to confidence, but assertiveness almost has like this negative connotation. And I think what we look at it as, it's it means that you get an outcome that serves both you and the party you're interacting with, handling, dealing with, whatever it is. It's an outcome that you can both live with and agree with, um, and it allows you to focus and achieve on like focus on what is possible versus like that. Oh, I can't. It's not possible. Version of the the same idea. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of times when people, they act with what they think of as assertiveness, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is they're like, okay, what, why do I not like this? Like, between this conversation, between me and you, like, what am I not going to get? And, you know, that's when, like how you just said something about, you know, we're not, it's rather thinking that it's what's possible instead of what's not. Mm -hmm. And that can be, it can be demeaning and almost like, like you said, it's, Someone's a loser, not like I'm not trying to be rude there, but I'm saying like someone loses in right, that mentality. Right. And then, um, so, you know, and granted, there's going to be instances where people are going to lose, and that's okay. And I think sometimes we have to accept a loss for a loss, but um, not, you know, it's not YMCA T ball where everybody wins, but um, there is going to be a, a, a big loser in the conversation of uh, aggressive assertiveness, the yes. bulldozer mentality. Yeah. So let's, let's, since you just talked about the aggressive behavior, let's just go into the three ways of, you know, how to, be, how to behave in a situation. And of course, first one is the aggressive behavior. Right. And I think when we, when we look at that, that's going to be the most well-known. That's going to be the most accepted common belief of assertiveness. And that's the taking the stand and believing in your rights, which leads to, obviously, you're going to violate someone else's. And so um, the mentality equals like a I win, you lose, which is basically what we just described. And that's, um, that's the common belief. And ultimately, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You can, uh, there's other ways to look at it. Like I said, there's three ways of behaving. And that's the first one, just because uh, it's, the most well known and accepted doesn't mean it's the right one. So the next version of this is going to be the passive aggressive behavior. And this is also, you know, another, this is on the other side of things, but this is also very, very common. And whenever I was kind of, we were doing research on this, I was like, man, I was like, how many times do I do this? Um, and I know we'll kind of give some examples, but basically passive aggressive is when you fail to stand up for your rights, your opinions, um, you know, you almost kind of, brush things off and just let it go. Um, mentality is, you know, I lose, um, I give up, and you win. Yeah, and, and so when we talked about the aggressive behavior being the most uh, accepted belief of, of assertiveness, you know, the passive aggressive one is, I think, the one that most of us will actually display. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's so common. And you think about it in the littlest of ways. When someone comes up to you and they ask you, hey, you know, how is this? And, or how are you? Okay, I'm good. Even though you're not, you just kind of go through this mentality of like, all of a sudden I'm going to be passive in asserting who I am. And you've just kind of established dominance for the other person or the other person has established that upon you. And you kind of gave the example of like, you know, eating dinner at a restaurant. And I mean, you can kind of go more on that. Yeah. Because I think that was actually a really easy way to see it and hear it. Right. I was listening to an Entree Leadership podcast and they had Simon Sinek. And if you don't know who Simon Sinek is, you need to go check him out because dude is, is incredible. Um, but he, he gave the idea of honesty 
And so when you go to a restaurant and you're out there with your family and the waiter comes out and they say, you know, how is everything? And now what did most of us do? It's good. Thanks. And then just go right back to what we're doing. Even if the food is, it's it's okay. And so his example there was if the soup is a bit salty and the waiter comes up and asks how everything is, you say, you know, if I'm going to be completely honest, the soup is a little salty. And then you might have everybody else at the table look up at you and gasp like, oh my gosh, they're going to spit in our food. (laughs) Um, But you stood up for what it is you believe in and you were honest with the situation. And so his, long story short, he basically said people appreciate that because if you're a chef or if you're somebody that's preparing a bunch of food and someone gives you honest feedback and they tell you, hey, this is salty, you can tone it down for the rest of the people um, and the rest of the consumers. It It does. And they want that honesty because most people just tell them everything is okay and they never get constructive criticism back. And that's actually what those restaurants really want. Like yeah. When they do ask that question, they do want that type of real feedback and not just, oh, everything was great. Because we all know we have you know, that one you know, maybe appetizer that comes out that you know, there's obviously four things left and it's not touched, but yet everybody, you know, there's a reason why it's not being <laughs> yeah. touched. It's not okay. But whenever that waiter comes and picks it up, how was everything? Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I think it's just, we have to be honest, and that passive-aggressive mentality is one that we fall into so many times, and we don't even realize it. So um, I think kind of leading into this third one, we talked about aggressive behavior, we talked about passive-aggressive behavior. Let's talk about an assertive behavior. What's that? And this is just, you know, when you stand up for what you believe, but at the same time, you're not, you know, you're not stepping on anyone's toe, anybody's toes. So, you know, that waiter comes, let's just keep using that example, the waiter comes, uh, the soup was too salty, but the question is, is how are you going to tell them that? Is it going to be salty? You know, is it going to be that kind of tone or is it, you know, look, everything was great. Just want to let you know, you know, kind of explaining it, you know, so that you both can, you're on level terms, so to say. Right. It's not like, yeah, the waiter doesn't come out to you and you're like, this tastes like shit. Excuse me, excuse me. I have to beep that out. But, um, it, you know, you don't come out there and not rude about it. You're just, you're helping them because ultimately their whole goal is to make sure you have a good experience. And by giving them constructive, honest criticism, you're helping them make it better for not only you, but everybody else down the line. And I think you can do that with everything. Any, any communication you have with anyone else, whether it's clients, uh, your peers, your friends, if you are able to be assertive and give constructive cr- criticism, excuse me, in a way that is not stepping on their toes or rude about it, they can grow from it. And so can you, because by helping somebody else get better, it's actually kind of coaching you through the process of being honest and helping yourself. And so obviously we think this assertive behavior is the route that we should you know, always strive for because again, like when it comes to the mentality of everything, it's the win-win. Right. Both parties win. Yeah. And that's definitely the, that's the kicker. And we all want to do that. And even if it might seem, I will say this, it might give this illusion of a loss at the time because you might be, it might seem rude or, or something else to that person. It, you're actually helping them out. So what might seem as a, a loss is actually a, a big win for them because they get to improve. And so we have to keep that in mind as we go through that. Well, let's, let's talk about the, the main goals. We've, we've got listed three for us that we feel are very important. So I'll start off with the first one. Um, just, you know, when it comes to being assertive, assertive listening, we need to let the other party know that we do care and want to know what they're about to tell us mm-hmm. and that we're going to try our best to understand their view on things. Yeah, and that's being open. And I think how many times do you have a conversation with somebody and they're looking down at their phone and they're not paying attention? And um, that's that kind of falls into that passive behavior that we don't necessarily want to have. And even if it's not, it gives that that feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely making sure you want you, the person to know that you care and, and you want to understand their point. What's number kind of leads to number two? Yeah, and that's we need to make sure that we a hundred percent understand what they're telling us. So ask questions, you know, make sure you know, and you're not just going through this blindly, just like, oh yeah, that sounded, oh yeah, I totally get it. Uh, what the heck? You know, and looking on the phone while listening is just not a good way to, it, if you're looking on your phone and I'm talking to you, in the back of my mind, I'm like, is he truly listening? Yeah. And, understanding what I'm saying. And you probably aren't. And even if you think you are, you're not getting the whole gist because they could be giving you body language implications that you're totally missing, um, different, you know, ways that they're speaking and you're missing it just because you're not really there and you're missing out on the whole thing. So leading us into number three. So once the conversation has started and you have, you know, listened, you're showing that person that you've listened, then it takes the time of, you know, we need to let that person know 
and understand everything that they just said. So some, I mean, maybe that's repeating it back and, you know, and saying like, I'm confirming what you just said. Is this correct? Mm. You know, letting them, letting them know that they were heard and listened to and understood is key. So everybody wants that. Everybody (laughs) wants it. Yeah. You think about it like when, if you have kids and you tell your kids something and they just don't listen, um, or you tell your coworker something, or if you are a, you run a company and you tell your employees something and you ask like, hey, you got that? Yes. And they go do something completely different because they weren't paying attention. So, um, and they were too scared. They were passive in how they were being assertive and they're not asking you or running back through it what you said. So um, confirm, confirm, confirm. <clears throat> so I've got, I've got something, just a question. Yeah. Do you think it's always correct to act with assertiveness? Well, that's a big one. I, I think... It depends. And I think um, there's a few ways to kind of go about it and saying, obviously, you want to be able to act with assertiveness, not passive uh, aggression or aggression. But you also have to understand context of the situation. So um, you have to be able to live with the outcome of it. You have to be honest with yourself in that. And if you can't live with the consequences of being honest and assertive, you, you probably it's probably not for you. Actually, I would challenge that. I would say it is for you, but... You have to be able to live with the consequences no matter what. Yeah. Because how many of us go through it all because we're too scared or we're fearful or we're doubting and we don't confirm things. We don't reiterate. We don't ask questions. And we just kind of go through life and we're like, oh, I accept this as normal. I do it. I do it all the time. And that's a terrible thing that I do. And I kind of cheat myself, my family, everybody else. You know, and in, in an option, you know, a different type of option for something like in that case of, Instead of just brushing it off on her shoulder saying, you know what, I accept what that person just said, even though when you really don't, is to actually tell the person that you're communicating with, like, hey, I'm about to kind of start this talk with you. Like, it's like (laughs) sometimes you have to lay it out. Like, look, don't take this the wrong way. Right. But let's actually talk this out to see where we can maybe tweak this, tweak that to help us get again to that mentality of win-win. Yeah, because it's... um... (laughs) How something is received doesn't always come out as how it was intended. Yes. And so, um, you know, it might seem like someone's bulldozing. And I think this is where assertiveness kind of hits this fork in the road. It's, I think we all owe it to ourselves and everybody we deal with to be assertive. And at the same time, we also owe it to everybody else to understand that somebody can be assertive. And so what I mean by that is like we have to be able to, to handle what's going to be said because we all have to be big boys. And granted, there's going to be some circumstances in which um, we're going to be a little bit uh, exposed emotionally, whatever it might be, and we might not be able to receive the message at that time. But we still have to be able to put forth that effort to do these things to uh, handle the consequences and handle the criticisms that we're going to receive. Well said. I like that. Let's... Uh... Let's talk about how the behavior side of things, um, how you're behaving during the conversation and why that, why that matters and how it's capturing. Yeah. I think building upon that last uh, question that you asked about is if it's all right to be assertive or to act with assertiveness. And I think that if you're able to lay it out there to somebody and say, guess what, this is what I'm about to say. And it might come across in blank way. You, you've kind of paved that road for them so they can walk it with you and understand a little bit more what you're saying. And so If you just come across as angry, if you just come across as mean, well, guess what? That person is going to just reflect that right back at you because they're like, wait a minute, no. Mm -hmm. And they're going to fire it right back. That's not good. So, and I think, you know, talking about someone coming at you being angry, um, you know, our typical, you know, reaction is to act angry back, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we believe, the assertive way would be to act that in that assertive way, saying, you know, how can we make this a win-win situation? Now, not always will that person be receptive of it at first, but I want to think that if you continue to act with that assertiveness behavior, it will soon rub off, Mm -hmm. you know, to that other person. And maybe it might not, but I think that person will realize, like, look, this conversation is about to end if this doesn't change the way that we're communicating, you know, at this point with this aggressive behavior. Right. Yeah, and it's it, it all just comes back down to understanding and being able to understand. Um, and and kind of going back to that, that key word of context is like if someone comes at you super angry, the first thing, yeah, we're going to fire right back, but I would, I would challenge all of you to kind of take a moment and say, like, what do they have going on in their lives that are causing them to be this way? Do that to the best of your ability. Now, if they're just flat out rude, 
You don't have to take that crap. But there is a certain point to which we have to be open-minded to see the big picture in the conversation that we're having. I've got an example of this here. Like Hit when it. it comes, yeah, when it comes to being aggressive, uh, let's see, this had to be two years ago when uh, me and my girlfriend were headed to Cancun. Lucky. And yeah, it was, I was, we were looking forward to it, right? We're in a great mood. We, get, we made it, like our flight left on time as well. So everything is like running smoothly. Well, we get to our, the, uh, the lobby of the hotel to check in. And there's an older couple in front of us. And they're up and they're talking with the, you know, person working and this uh this couple was not happy about something i don't know i kind of overheard something about there was two beds instead of one king bed you know it was just something like that and i had told charlotte i looked over at her i was like look i was like even if something happens let's just let's just act normal it's fine we're here we're on vacation who cares if we have you know two small beds instead of a king it's not a big deal so sure enough we it's our turn those people left very angry by the way and uh we go up in line, and we get our receipt, and I notice that it says you have two beds and not and no king. And I was like, I was like, no problem. I told the guy, I was like, look, you know, when I reserved it, I ordered a king, and he looked at me, and he goes, I'm sorry, sir, we're we're just all full, we're fully booked. We don't have anymore. We overbooked ourselves. And I said, okay, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, he looks at me, and he looks down at the sheet of paper. He's looking at his computer, and he's like, hold on, one second. I'm like, okay. And he turns around, he walks out uh, from behind the desk, goes in like their little office for a few minutes, comes back and he hands us a new sheet of paper. He goes, hi, I got you a new room. Uh, you have the suite level so-and-so looking out on the water. And just thinking about like how we acted in that situation, you know, I feel like we really won in that, in that but you know, it all comes back to like, do, do we act with that assertiveness? You know, and we were calm. It's like, we're on vacation. We're not going to fight this. But you never know. I mean, you could get a big win out of a simple, you know, simply being nice in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I would also say being nice, but not in a passive manner to where you're right. like, oh, well, okay, thanks. But you I mean, you at least challenge the point in an assertive manner. Exactly. That you kill him with kindness. And like, that's all I was really looking for was explanation on, you know, once we, we booked our king bed and we didn't get that, you know, I just called it to his attention, so to say. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really simple. I mean, I know other cases are even more harsh and you have to talk a lot more, but you just never know with that kind of gesture what you can get. Yeah, so the lesson learned here is go on vacation with Blake. Oh, man. And uh, you can share a king-size bed with him. Uh, let's not go that far. Or you might not go that far. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I do think it's something that you guys need to keep in mind is that the conversations that you have, you know, it might sound kind of duh, but it's a two-way street. And I think the walk away from all this is, yeah, whatever you challenge somebody with or whatever you're communicating to somebody – they're going to reflect that back at you as a defense mechanism or whatever it might be. And if you can handle these situations in that assertive manner and, and be confident and speak from an honest place, you're going to get the same thing back more often than not. And so then you can get upgraded um, throughout life if you want to look at it like that. Yeah. We just have, I think we just need to remember that we have to, you know, we have to believe in what we believe. We have to believe in that. But we also have to be, again, a good listener mm -hmm. and see where that other person is coming from. Right. And gaining that almost trust, so to say, with that person. True. And I think what uh, a big thing you just said there is we have to have beliefs. And you have to, you can't, that, that goes with being assertive. Is like you have to have something to stand for and that you truly believe in. And I'm not saying like it's like green peace or something like that, but it's like, look, I'm confident enough to know that I booked a room like this and I paid a lot of money and it's okay if something happened, but at the same time, I just want to bring it to your attention in a calm and assertive manner and you get a, a, a suite overlooking the ocean. That's a good <laughs> metaphor for life. Always. Okay. Always. Always. Yeah. <laughs> Not the bathroom view. Awesome. Well, let's, let's challenge uh, our listeners. Yeah. I got, a, I got an idea for it. I like it. I like it. So I um, challenge for you guys this week is to be honest. Now, what do I mean by that? It's like, if you can't go a week, go 48 hours. And I'm talking about no little white lies, nothing like if someone asks you, how's your day going? And you're like, good. You can say, it, you know, it, it's been a challenge. You can say that, brush it off. Or my favorite one. This is, sorry, I have to interrupt. Yeah. It's always like, 
so how have you been? And you always say, busy. I'm like, what? Oh, That's, yeah. you know, it's, and I do it all the time too. It's like, yeah. oh, I've just been busy. It's like, no, just tell me. Like, really? <laughs> it's like, been watching a lot of football lately. That's why I'm <laughs> exactly. so busy. Yeah, but um, I think from a challenge standpoint is is go through this week and be be honest and and you know what you don't necessarily have to give full disclosure on things and you can sidetrack answers meaning like yeah so if if you're having an emotional breakdown and someone asks you how are you instead of trying to tell somebody like oh my dog got ran over and like going through every little bit of it you can just say it's been a challenge or you know what i'm doing the best i can like whatever it is have have details no let the person know how you're truly feeling yeah, and you know what? Maybe that person wants to get into details with you. Maybe it's just like somebody who's walking past you. I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, but that's the challenge for you guys this week is be honest, be assertive, and no white lies, nothing, and see how that works for you. And, I mean, I would say give this a try. The reason why I love this, you know, this little challenge here is because, you know, say you are having a horrible day. You know, it's just it started off bad, and it's not going right. Well, if somebody, you know, asks you, you know, how's your day going and you say, you know, it's not, it's been a challenge like you just said, maybe that person can actually help you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're not going to just like let it go over. They're going to say like, well, you want to talk about it? Let's go grab a cup of coffee, whatever. So I think we need to look at, you know, this challenge is like, see if you can, for one, do it. Can you state your opinions? Tell them why your opinion is what it is and see what happens after yeah, be be uniquely you, and I, I, I'm, I come from the belief system that everything does happen for a reason, but you have to be honest in those situations. So, you know what, everyone, if someone comes into your life, and maybe it isn't passing, maybe you run into an old friend, maybe someone texts you out of the blue, and they ask you that question, how are things? And all you say is, they're good, even though really you just want to vent out. Maybe that's that opportunity for you, like Blake just mentioned, to reconnect, to have somebody that might be able to take some of that burden off of you and just help you or point you in the right direction. So be honest and, and try that out this week and let us know how it goes. Oh, yeah. I liked it. It was good. It was glad yes. to be back, actually. Yes, happy um, to be back. Was, I didn't know how this was going to roll because just been out of the circuit for so long, but back and have more content for you guys, and it's going to become a regular thing to where we get this bad boy rolling again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we will see you next week. Until then, be honest and uh, enjoy the week. See you guys. Two dragons. Go Browns.